Hey everyone, it's Base Junkie Transmitting from Hamburg, Germany, back with a new video and well with the second or third attempt to record this video because, well, I had recorded the whole chart haul for December, like 2K20, like a minute ago or something like that, and then I, like, took up or picked up the camera and, like, I wanted to stop the recording and then I realized I either hadn't pressed the record button or it, like, went off for some reason and the whole video disappeared. So here I am again, showing you my favorite records for December 2K20. And I gotta admit, first up, that I had to restrict myself from buying records quite a bit. Point A, there is like way too many good records out there. Like, I don't know what happened within the past month, but like the market has exploded and my want list has grown exponentially. And uh, on the other hand, there is another point because I have been writing a lot of like, uh, press infos for labels and release sheets and all that uh, in my freelance or so as a freelancer and stuff and a lot of those jobs or basically all of them throughout the past two months have fallen flat so uh, I had to restrict myself to buy just the things I really wanted and there is like so much more I cannot afford right now and uh, this is uh, might get even worse when it comes to the total lockdown they like announced for Germany or like that might come for Germany right now. So uh, this is not 10 records, this is I guess seven, but I hope you enjoy it anyway. And we're starting with one I am still like very, very fond of, and I've done a full unboxing video on this. This is Folklore by Taylor Swift. And actually I've been listening to this album not enough, not that mu as much as it deserved, but uh, I've been listening to this album uh, right before I shot this. So uh, if you want to see more about the whole album and about the first thoughts I had on my unboxing, uh, please watch the unboxing video for this, um, which I will link in the end card of this video. And uh, yeah, this is still a great album and uh, not one uh, one parties to actually, and the exact opposite of what Reputation was, but uh, this is more like an intimate uh, listening piece. It's super hard to memorize all the lyrics and even to memorize uh, the, the vocal lines or the vocal harmonies within the single uh, within the individual songs because uh, Taylor has managed to switch up all the harmonies within one song this time like for a few times so there is like chorus bridge chorus bridge another chorus changed chorus then another like uh, verse which is a totally different melody than the other ones and uh, with totally different vocal harmonies harmonics and stuff but still it's a, an album like a like velvet blanket like a very intimate listening experience and i love this to bits and uh, illicit affairs has been like one of my favorites as well seven is a killer uh the bonus track the lakes is uh yeah very touching as well and uh, maybe one of the uh, most most sing-along songs in a in a way uh yeah, of course, The Last American, Great American Dynasty is uh, one of my favorites. Still, Betty is a killer as well. And uh, the only one I'm not that sure of is uh, Mirrorball, because this is too much sugar coating for me. But still, whatever. Folklore is a great album, and I'm very curious to listen to the lyric videos for uh, Evermore. This is a new album which Taylor has put out digitally like two days ago, I, th uh, I think. I've only uh, watched the video for Willow once and I'm, I'm still like... Uh, I was like, after listening to this, like peaking at vinyl prices for this one for pre-order because uh, the vinyl is on pre-order and uh, might ship in May actually. So uh, we'll see how this goes. We'll listen to all the lyric videos for this, as I said, like after editing and uploading this one. And this seems to be the sister album of Folklore, like the second part, because they had like such like productive songwriting session that they just didn't stop and recorded like a whole album more. So uh, interesting concept, uh, also following the same style as something that Taylor ne never has done before. So uh, I'm very curious if this code can really hold up to the standard of Folklore, but I'm afraid it does, so uh, I gotta buy a Taylor vinyl again, and I know Tom Hyren District will be teasing me for this. But on another note, more electronic music with a 7-inch. This is DJ Space Heater, 
a totally made up name uh, with a seven inch on the Puss label, which is called Solidarity Forever. They kind of like first for the Puss label as they've only done like 12 inches and 10 inches so far. And as you might know from my other like chart haul videos, Puss is a label that puts out like bootleg versions of like popular tracks and these times is the first as well uh, because this is like more like two-step UK garage so UK based bass music musically uh, which sounds okay on this seven inch but uh, the tracks are like more more than five and a half minutes long and uh, putting that much space plus bass on a seven inch is quite an adventurous move so uh, this is more like a and sounds more like a novelty record. So it is club playable, but it's a little bit like um, mid-range heavy and not that bass heavy as it could have been on a 12 inch. But um, yeah, interesting stuff, very cheesy, some very cheesy samples and stuff on there as well. So, uh, but a nice little sweet record, DJ Space Heater on the Puss label. The next one is a seven inch as well, pressed at the same pressing plant as my records are. So. Uh, this is Istari Lastafara on uh, Sozialistischer Plattenbau, his own label, Asset Skanking Volume 1, two tracks, Maximum Plank and Hyperism Plank. And actually a 7-inch with a big center hole is something I haven't seen in quite a while. So um, take this in for a little bit of like musical beauty. This is dub, definitely a high-speed dub, very hounded with like a lot of elements of dark jungle and like a little bit of breakcore, a little bit of acid as well. So very typical for the uh, Sozialistische Plattenbau label, which has been running out of Hamburg for like 21 years now. So a productive force in that realm and uh, always nice to have some local guys producing great music. So Istari Lassafara, Acid Skanking Volume 1, local stuff, good stuff. The next one is an album as well, Rave Encounters Volume 1 on the uh, Rave or Die label. And this one's the price for the most suckage in terms of a flimsy, bullshitty, crappy cover art thing. But it's not even a cover, it's like a, this. A flimsy double 10 inch sleeve, whatever, which is not only ugly, but might be break again like uh, very soon and uh, there's actually like zero effort in this this is like the most disgusting bullshit but the tracks are great actually uh, tracks by Umwelt and nine times nine I don't know what the number even is but it's nine times nine that's the artist's name deep dimension and Fallhaber, which is actually uh, misspelled on this one. I guess it's two L's in there. And what this is, is actually uh, new music, but a, with a big like revival feel. So it's like the return of like heavy rave music with hard trance elements, like dark rave elements as well, like hints of GABA, but not that hard, but uh, all in this kind of direction, very rave oriented way too fast for a lot of clubs these days but uh, looks great sounds great uh, takes me back to the 90s kind of or to that 90s euphoria feel but um, the cover is not only a bit shit or the sleeve is like real shit so i gotta replace this and i don't know with what but i will find a way but anyway this record of the tracks on the air on there on the rave or die label on rave encounters volume one are Ace actually, and uh, yeah, I needed this for a reason, but not for the shitty cover. And if you put them, I don't know if you can, no, you, you cannot see this, but if I put them re records like this, there's even the orange shining through the translucent green marble thing. So, um, beautiful but shitty on the other one. Other hand, this one is pretty as well, it's a Hearst label, also a four track compilation. Uh, looks like this uh, with a silk screen print which you cannot read properly. So uh, there are tracks by Exact and BFX, Klünter, Luke Eargoggle, which is also on the Bonker label from the Netherlands. 
and emboss and this is like kind of a mixture of South London street bass and sci-fi darkish industrial electro for three tracks and one very raw unprocessed acid track and uh, this is dark like warehouse squat club music at like the darkest point of a set so very intense and uh, very industrial sci-fi very thrilling and also very beautiful with this silk screen print of a mercedes-benz hearse on the cover which is also spread about the record uh, all over the record so uh, this looks great a little bit of silverish in there good underground music and uh, yeah i love this i love dark electro so um this is a good one hers 003 is the label the next one was kind of surprised because i haven't bought a new school breaks record in years actually because uh, i thought the genre was gone and there was no proper vinyl around but Bushwalker is making a comeback with all night in heaven e with his all night in heaven ep on his own plunk records label as you can see here and he brings back new school breaks in a slightly different variety because well there's one actually new school breaks electro breaks track on there the others are uh, more electro influenced one is also a little bit of like jungle influenced as well but overall it's uh, a record that fits into the new school breaks break straw and uh, is deeper so not prime time and tear out as you might be used to from like People like Plum DJs, Crafty Cards, or Aqua Sky. But it's a good good record for a set, and it was great to find like actual interesting new breaks, new school breaks tracks around on vinyl because uh, I love this genre, although there's not much uh, like opportunity to play it out. And uh, but still, it's always good to have some new stuff in your set, and even for radio. So Plank Records, Bushwalker, All Night in Heaven EP. Good stuff. And the last one is by an artist we have seen around as well. Basic Rhythm, Raw Basics Volume 1 this time on the Raw Basics label. You've seen number two, I guess. And uh, yeah, Basic Rhythm is one of those versatile artists who are coming with a surprise in every record, I guess. So one track on of these is like post-hardcore, like hardcore in terms of breakbeat, hardcore, dark side, as you might call it, uh, or might have called it in 93. So. Uh, Basically, it has the same feel as like old school breakbeat tracks, but there are not much or not many beats involved, but just this darkish, brooding, apocalyptic atmosphere with not much going on. And then out of nowhere, there is like a very heavy industrial rave steps hitting for like 30 seconds and like uh, causing absolute havoc. And then it's like on a darker atmospheric tip again. And the other track is like clunky, clumsy, minimal house. Which is also interesting and also interesting to see what kind of music basic rhythm is uh, able to do actually with one record so very eclectic but very good actually so raw basics highly recommended and this is it with my seven favorite records for december and i hope i will be able to buy some more until like the next one hits in like january and stuff so we'll see if we can uh, get a lockdown as announced in germany or if they keep the record store open and if there will be some like warm financial showers coming in which i hope for so uh, i will be able to spend at least i guess 10 percent of that money i might be getting on records or whatever so uh, but still uh, i need those freelance jobs to come back because uh, well, there is a junkie in bass junkie if this is for a reason. So um, we'll see how this goes. I'm going to go into editing mode right now. If you like this, like, subscribe, share the news, leave a comment, and I will be replying to you as soon as possible. Check my descrip uh, description box down there for the socials and also for a link to my chart post on my website, nightsales.de, which might also be a little bit quiet these days because I'm... Uh, out of promos actually because I've been working that hard and that fast on promo reviews this time or this year that I'm actually uh, out of stuff to write about for a few weeks maybe so if there's not a new puzzle coming in but still I will post some things up there some tracks some videos I find and stuff and even this chart haul so watch out for the link and also follow me on Instagram Twitter, whatever, uh, support me, get to Bandcamp, and you know the score. I'm out. Gonna see you in the next one. See you later.